Hi guys, welcome to the latest video. Um, as the title suggests, you're probably already aware this is about sash windows. Um, it's going to be a series of videos, uh, this is part one, um, on how I'm going to refurbish this sash window here and the rest of these I'll be doing at the same time. So there's seven windows in total and um, they're all sort of similar condition on this side of the house. So this is like a southeast facing side of the house. You can see the condition of the sill there and the sash has got some uh, putty missing etc and a bit rotten in places. Um, there's two on the north side of the house around here and these ones you can see what a difference that uh, location of a window makes. Uh, same age windows, same maintenance but these are solid as a rock so these two windows here um, aren't going to require as much uh, work as the other five but uh, what we're going to do the plan for this job is to make uh, new sashes for all the windows uh, stick some double glazing in there draft strip them fully around the outsides um, and uh, refurbish the frames and then uh, get them painted so they look like new again so when I'm looking at a job like this uh, you want to be you've got to take the obvious measurements but uh, you sort of want to have a, an idea or a plan of attack with uh, with what you're going to do in regards to the work so um, my plan of attack for this one is to um, make new sashes for all the windows I'm going to measure them up um, then uh, make new parting beads um, get them glazed, double glaze them, put the, uh, actually not put the draft strip groove, I've got a, a special draft strip that will fit um, in the edge of the sash and you don't see any draft strips or brushes um, in the frames or in the beads so I'm looking forward to using that um, and I'm going to, when they're all ready, come back and uh, remove the old sashes, refurbish the frames and then fit the new sashes in at that point um, and then get it all working that way and we're going to need to add some extra weight to the uh, sash cords because uh, we're double glazing them and they're obviously only weighted for the single pane of glass and I dare say this glass is only 3mm thick uh, like agricultural glass and uh, we'll be replacing it with 4mm thick and two panes of so will end up adding quite a lot of weight to the uh, to the actual glass. Now in terms of um, measuring a window like this, um, to measure the sashes you always go from the outside edge there at the bottom of the the outside or the bottom of the bottom sash is on the outside edge of that uh, section of sill. So um, don't ever measure from the outside here. Um, if there's no sashes in place, it's quite easy to default to measuring from there, but your measurement is actually from this point here And you measure to the top uh, So the head piece of the sash and uh, Then you can take that measurement and uh, set your windows out on a on a rod in the workshop and obviously you're measuring from this uh, pulley style here to the other pulley style there as your width measurement and also you want to uh, scrape the paint off um, on the outside sash groove so from the outside uh, casing to the parting bead um, you want to scrape some paint off there so you get back to wood and measure that gap there because you can't change that gap when you're refurbishing because it's determined by the parting bead to that casing but you want to measure it in a few places and make sure you measure the old sashes as well and uh, get a good idea of what that measurement should be because um, in a lot of old sash windows these casings can sort of move away from the uh, pulley styles and open up etc or uh, parting beads could not be seated properly and you, if you make your sashes too thick you have a, a bit of a job trying to make them all fit because uh, you've then got to plane them down to suit so uh, that measurement's quite critical and obviously the other measurements uh, you can get a good idea from what you're going to be making from what's there 
if you're copying them exactly then just copy the existing sashes if you're double glazing like i am you might have uh we've got to put a thicker uh, meeting rail in here to accept the double glazing so i'll just take the overall measurement of the height and reset the windows out on the bench so that i can get the glass panes the same size etc while you're here as well measuring up uh, you can slot a piece of paper in behind the horn so if you push a piece of paper in behind the horn in this position you can then draw around it and take your measurements so you've got the shape of the horn so that if you're uh, replacing the sashes you can um, you can do that quite easily and you've got that shape profile if you need it to uh, cut on the new ones um, any other things worth noting always run your glazing bars on a sash window um, these ones are obviously going to run right through top to bottom but if that was a Georgian window with say eight panes in it so you'd have another center vertical bar and then a horizontal bar through the lot um, unlike most joinery you would run the uh, vertical glazing bars through um, and quite often tenon them through the uh, meeting rail and the bottom rail and it just gives the sash window some strength because um, obviously when you you push on the middle rail or pull it to open it or shut it then it uh, is stressing it quite a lot so the traditional technique was to um, tenon that rail through um, to give that centre rail tenon the glazing bar through to give the centre rail some strength um, to help hold it together and it seems to work because uh, these ones have lasted over 120 years and they still look pretty good okay so taking a look at the inside of the windows now um, we're going to be we've obviously taken the measurements of the sashes so we've got the uh, the width measurement from here to the other side and we've taken the measurement from uh, from up here in the head so this this head section here and we measure it like I said from the outside to the outside of that uh, beveled edge of the bottom sash so the inside sash so that's our measurements for the window and uh, the thickness um, use the outside sash as the thickness the reason for that being um, you wouldn't measure the inside sash thickness because uh, this bead here the staff bead it's called is removable and uh, you can set the thickness of the inside sash uh, to suit the the whatever width you've got so um, that can vary quite a bit so you can actually set that slightly wider above here so it, it guides freer um, when it's open and then shuts down nice and tight um, with the draft strips so I tend to do that to just very very slightly so that uh, as it's shut it's got a nice tight seal and then as you open it that gap gets slightly wider and it slides a bit freer so for that reason I would always measure the outside sash um, width there and then you've got that uh, that's it's kind of fixed you can't alter that other than rebating the the parting bead or uh, rebating the sash over it so um, that's the one I'd be checking to get my width measurement or thickness measurement of the sash um, at this point, I mean, you're going to check to make sure the pulleys are working on all the sashes. Um, we can replace them as necessary um, as we come to it when we're refurbishing. But uh, I think they do all work, and I'd rather leave things original um, unless people specifically want a nice new brass pulley uh, putting in place. I'd, uh, I'd try and refurbish the ones that were there. Um, when we come to refurbish them, like I said, uh, We'll probably end up replacing the sills on most of them. Um, I've done them before where it's just the, the front section that's uh, rotten. So you can cut the sill down uh, halfway at this, this point here and just replace that front section and uh, joint it into this back section and make a nice strong joint between the two. Um, then anything like on these corners, if they're rotten here, you just end up splicing the piece back up, uh, finding a height where it's it's good timber again, and then uh, doing a nice splice joint on an angle, and uh, 
putting a new piece in there to replace that where it's gone rotten. Um, looks over so want uh, new parting beads. These are never glued in or anything, so they should, once you've cut along the paint joint uh, to free that up, you should be able to just pull them away from the window like so. Uh, it's always a bit of a messy job. So we'll measure this width here, the width of this groove, and uh, the length of them, and we'll get new parting beads out. Um, I am draft stripping these windows, but I'm not using a, uh, a draft strip in the parting bead. I'm going to use a new draft strip that uh, sits in the sash and uh, actually seals against the, um, the jam of the sash window and the uh, parting bead and the staff bead at the same time. So I'm quite interested to see how that works. Um, like I say, add, adding weight to the pockets for the extra glass. Um, pockets and do on this screw here. Uh, there's a cut joint. If you can get the camera to focus in the in the groove there. There's a uh, there's a joint cut behind the uh, parting bead and this piece of timber will uh, will will pull away from the rest of it and uh, release the pocket and uh, that'll allow you access to the actual box and uh, where the weights sit and you can put the weights in there or add extra weights etc when you re-thread the sashes. So you can see here, like I said before, if you can just make out um, with, under the paint there, you probably just see it. We've got a raised section here and a raised section here with a line. Um, that is the joint showing through the paint of that uh, glazing bar. If you can see any better on this one. No, it's nearly invisible on this one. Um, you might see it in the, under the bottom rail if they've turned them right through. Yeah, there you go, look. Um, get the camera to light. So that uh, that glazing bar is uh, tenoned right through the bottom rail. And it just gives the sash some strength. So when you use this uh, centre rail like people do to push the sash up and down, it uh, gives it the strength to be able to do that and not fall apart. A um, good idea is to have some uh, hook lifts on these, so uh, it's like a brass or a chrome um, hook that you can stick your fingers in and uh, you can then use that to open the sash up and down rather than uh, using the meeting rail as a, as a handle to lift the sash. I'm going to try and keep the, uh, the existing staff beads where possible. They look in pretty good shape and uh, I do like to quite keep things original where, where I can. Um, so we'll take them off and we'll perhaps uh, run the heat gun over them and get all the paint off and um, try and reuse them. Uh, they should be fine. Um, take note of the uh, mouldings when I'm uh, measuring up at this stage and I'll try and replicate that uh, in the beading of my uh, new sash. I'm gonna, because they're double glazed, I'll be glazing them from the inside. So uh, I'll try and recreate this molding within the uh, beading on the new, new sashes. So you can sort of see the profile of that. It's a, it's a very narrow glazing bar. It's about 23 mil thick. And there's about 8 mil in the centre there, so there's not much of a moulding this way, but in this plane, it's about 15 mil deep. Now that style of moulding is uh, it's called a Grecian style of, of moulding. So it's a, the mould type is a OG, it's called an OG mould, but uh, the style is Grecian. So Grecian mouldings are derived from uh, ovals and non-circular arcs whereas a romanic or roman molding is uh is derived from a perfect circle so if you had an og there that was a perfect radius of say six mil or or nine mil um obviously it'd make that glazing bar a lot thicker because it would be nine mil molding both sides so that's how they uh make the glazing bars so thin is because their mouldings are, uh, are derived from an oval and it's a Grecian type moulding. Okay so that's pretty much it for uh, for this video. Um, it's just a bit of a walk around and an introduction to the job. Um, 
So the next video uh, is going to be setting out of the new sashes. Um, I'm going to draw out a rod and uh, detail uh, how I'm going to make them basically. And I'll, I'll draw the sashes out as well. So you can see in a cross section drawing um, how this uh, box sash is constructed, where the sashes sit within it. Um, and I'll do that in a vertical section and a horizontal section so you can understand um, where and how everything works um, against this video of, uh, of where it is in place. So um, I'll try and edit the two things together so that you can see um, in real world terms from the drawing what it looks like in real life. Please remember to hit the subscribe button and uh, YouTube will notify you when the uh, next video in the, in the series comes up.